What's going on, folks? I'm Des with Desfit, and this is the Foreigner 45 from Garmin. It's the entry-level model in Garmin's lineup of fitness and sports-focused wearables, and although it's called a Forerunner, it actually has a good amount of sports profiles that'll work for everything from runners to cyclists as well as gym goers. So I've been testing the Foreigner 45 out for about the last month or so, and I've used it for everything from running both indoors and outdoors to cycling both indoors and outdoors as well, some gym-based activities like weight training as well as some gym-based cardio. And I like to go into quite a bit of detail in my review, so if you do find this video useful, make sure to hit that like button down below. It's a small little thing that you can do that helps the channel a lot, and I appreciate it. So I will be mentioning some of the same things that I mentioned in the intro video I did a few weeks back, but I'm going to try not to be too repetitive, but this video kind of will have everything. So without the way, let's talk about the 445. The 445 is a lightweight sports watch with a new round design rather than the square one that was found in the previous generation 435. It comes in two different sizes, and the one I'm showing you today is the larger of the two, coming in at 42 millimeters, where the 45S comes in at 39.5 millimeters. However, both actually do have the same exact one inch display. They just increase the case size in the 42 millimeter version to accommodate for larger wrists. The display is a transflective display, meaning it's designed to be very readable in direct sunlight. So basically, as more sunlight hits the display, it's actually going to become more readable. And it's also an always on display with essentially two different modes, with and without a backlight for different lighting situations. And it's going to be using five physical buttons rather than a touchscreen. And this is more aimed at a fitness and sports crowd where touchscreens can be a little bit more challenging to use in a fitness capacity, especially when your hands are sweaty or if you have gloves on. It's going to be waterproof down to five atmospheres or 50 meters, but it actually doesn't have any swimming profiles. But the former 245 does. And I'll be covering that in my review of the 245, so make sure to subscribe to get a notification when that video comes out. The watch strap is nice and stretchy and comfortable, and it's going to be removable via these two screws. But these are non-standard straps, but Garmin does have a few different color options available on their site if you want to mix things up. The battery is advertised to last up to 7 days in smartwatch mode and then up to 13 hours in GPS mode, and I found these figures to be pretty spot on. It comes with six different stock watch faces to choose from, but you can also download more watch faces through the Garmin Connect app or through the Garmin Connect IQ app, which you can think of as something like an app store. So first I'm going to show you the widgets. The widgets are kind of like a different snapshot of different things that the watch can collect or display. The first screen shows your current heart rate, stress level, and body battery. If we enter this screen by pressing on the upper right hand button, you can see your heart rate over the last four hours. And then if we click again, you can see your resting heart rate over the last seven days. And then next is your stress level, which takes about 30 seconds to register. And then if we dive in, we can see your stress level over the last four hours. Next is your body battery, which gives you an indication of your energy levels, which can be beneficial for making sure you have enough energy for your next workout. And again, the trends over the last four hours. Then we can see that in comparison with your stress as well as your body battery since midnight. And then next is a My Day widget, which shows the activities that you did that day, your intensity minutes for the week, which is basically the amount of minutes of moderate to vigorous activity. And you can set up a goal for this. And then you're going to have your daily steps, steps for the week, as well as your distance. And then daily calories and the calories burned over the course of the week. In terms of smartwatch features, you can view notifications on the watch itself, including text messages, but you can't reply from the watch itself. And then there's also a calendar which shows upcoming events, including anything that you'll set up in Garmin Coach. And I'm actually going to have a specific video on Garmin Coach coming up soon. Next, you can see your activity history, and then you can dive into an individual activity to see all the details. And then lastly, here's where you can see your training plan in Garmin Coach. There's also features that you can access by pressing and holding the upper left hand key, which is what they call the controls menu. Here you can power off the watch and then it has a stopwatch, a timer, as well as alarms. There's also the ability to disconnect the Bluetooth connection to your phone, toggling a do not disturb mode, and then find my phone, which makes a sound on your phone in case you lost your phone. And then alternatively, it also has find my watch that you can access through the Garmin Connect smartphone app, which will make a sound on your watch. And then finally, going back to the controls menu, there is going to be a get assistance feature. So this is one of the two safety and tracking features that will actually send your location as well as your information to emergency contacts that you'll set up in Garmin Connect. So this could be beneficial in a number of ways. So let's say you felt like you're in danger. What you could do is you can enable get assistance by either accessing it from the controls menu, or you can actually just long press that upper left hand key for about five seconds, which will enable it as well. And then the other safety and tracking feature is called instant detection, where it's actually going to try to detect an impact and then again, send your location and information to emergency contact. So it's not only trying to detect the impact, but also no movement after the fact. So if you're to like crash and then not move, that's obviously not a good thing. And then it's going to try to send that alert. 
But just note that incident detection only works during an activity, not just like daily use. So you actually have to start an activity like running, cycling, or walking. And then the other caveat with both incident detection as well as get assistance is that you do have to be paired to your phone or have your phone on you because it's going to use your phone's cellular connectivity to send the alerts. All right, so now onto the fitness and sports focused stuff with the 445. So it has onboard GPS that'll so track your running, cycling, walking, hiking. So it'll collect your distance as well as speed. And then also has a wrist based heart rate sensor on the back, which will collect your heart rate during those activities as well as all day long. In terms of the sport and activity profiles you get with the 445, it comes with running outdoors, treadmill for running indoors, cycling, cycling indoors, a generic cardio profile for let's say something like a body pump class. And then there's going to be some more that you can access via the Garmin Connect mobile app. And then all in all, there's going to be a dozen profiles to choose from. So when we go to start an activity, let's show the running activity profile here. It'll show a couple things on the screen. First is going to be the status of your GPS signal. Taking it right out of the box, it could maybe take 30 seconds to acquire that GPS signal, but sometimes it'll be within a few seconds. Same thing can be said if you travel a far distance away from the last time it acquired GPS, but for the most part, it should be within five to 10 seconds. Next up, you're gonna see your battery status, whether or not you're connected to your phone. And by the way, because it does have onboard GPS, you do not have to bring your phone along with you. But if you wanna use that safety and tracking feature, you will need to bring your phone. And then next, you'll see indicators for external sensors that you can pair with the watch. You can pair external heart rate sensors, which collect more accurate heart rate data, foot pods, which can collect more accurate stride length and distance, especially for indoor running, as well as speed and cadence sensors for cycling. Again, very useful for indoor cycling. Okay, so going back to the run profile, if you press the down key, you can access different options such as different workouts you can do, data screens, which you can use to customize the layout of the data screens to show anywhere from one to three fields, as well as what information is gonna be showed on each one of those fields. And then you can even add additional data screens if you wish. So all in all, you can have up to five data screens. Next, we have alerts, which you can set up for pace, heart rate, and other metrics. Below that, we have lap options on whether or not you wanna have it automatically track your laps based on every mile. Auto pause, which will pause your activity when you come to a stop, let's say to like a stoplight or something. And then we also have some options for GPS. You have just plain old GPS, GPS plus GLONASS, and then GPS plus Galileo. But in terms of which GPS setting you should use, that's gonna be up to your location. So I'm here in Colorado and I just use the normal old GPS setting and everything worked perfectly fine for me. But some people may need to use GPS plus Galileo. Some people may need to use GPS plus GLONASS. So my recommendation would be just try to use it with the default settings straight out of the box. And if you come up with some crazy results, try something different. But I guess with that out of the way, let's actually talk about what data the watch collected for me at least. So like I said, the GPS performance was quite good for me and it was pretty much spot on for running where it tracked the distance well and it also had pretty accurate GPS tracks. And then after you complete your run, it'll show you plenty of details for that actual run and it'll also show you estimated VO2 max and then this will actually change as you complete more runs. Oh, one more thing is that the 445 will also collect your cadence and stride length and I found these figures to be very comparable with other test devices. And then going back to GPS again, the same thing goes for cycling performance where it had no issues for both road biking as well as mountain biking. And I tested this with both wide open areas as well as heavily wooded areas and it was nearly identical with other test devices. In regards to heart rate for running, it was pretty good. You'll see here that it was pretty close to two external heart rate straps. One of those is being on my chest and then the other on my arm, both of which provide more accurate heart rate than wrist-based heart rate sensor. You will see a few hiccups here where it tracked a bit high, but nothing too crazy by any means. And we still end up with a pretty good average heart rate that's quite close to other test devices. And then I also did test this for running indoors on a treadmill where it will try to estimate your distance. Now, what's important to do here though, is to run outside a handful of times before running indoors. So it can actually use your cadence as well as stride length along with GPS to give a better estimation of your distance indoors. And then what you'll see here, that's not perfectly accurate, but what is nice is that you can actually calibrate this with the watch by manually entering a distance when you go to save the activity. So now let's talk about heart rate for cycling. So with cycling, there's a lot of variables that can definitely affect risk-based heart rate performance. First of all, your wrist can be bent. Then there's gonna be vibrations, let's say for mountain biking. So in the following examples, you will see here that things can get a little bit funky. In this example of road biking outside, we can see it starts out fairly close to an external heart rate strap, but then it starts to veer off a bit and then tracks abnormally for a lot of the ride. 
But then if we take it indoors where a lot of those variables are gonna be eliminated, we see a much more consistent result. However, there are some spikes and drops here, but there were occasions where I started to stand and sprint on the bike, which will change the wrist position. But again, not that far off overall. But with mountain biking, this is where nearly all wrist-based heart rate sensors can suffer. And you can see some occasions here where it had a challenging time locking back onto heart rate. And you'll see this occurring when I started to reach some higher speeds going downhill where there were more vibrations. And the same thing here at around 37 minutes as well as around 50 minutes. So for mountain biking and other activities that do involve a lot of wrist flexion or vibrations, I would definitely recommend getting an external heart rate strap, which again, the 445 can pair to. And then while we're on the topic, weight training is another area where wrist-based heart rate sensors don't do well for the same reasons, and we can see that reflected here. And for daily tracking, I found that the step counts were very realistic along with calories, but just note that you may not have a completely accurate calorie count if you do a lot of weight training activity, since the heart rate may not be accurate for that sort of activity. But also note that it does not track floors climb since it does not have a built-in altimeter. And lastly, it does also track your sleep, which was very realistic and in line with other trackers. All right, so what's the verdict? Well, the 445 provides some pretty accurate data with possible exceptions for heart rate for stuff like cycling and weight training. And although it's the base level four in a model, it still provides a lot of features that should work for both beginner as well as intermediate sports-minded folks. Now at 199, it isn't necessarily as competitive in regards to features with other watches in this price range. But the one thing to consider is that it does have Garmin Connect, which is a pretty robust smartphone app. And it also does have a desktop web browser experience where you can dive in really deep into that data. Plus, it does pair with external heart rate straps as well as other sensors, and the battery life is pretty darn good, so you should easily be able to get about four to five days out of it, even while using GPS about an hour or two per day, and then obviously even more so if you're just using it indoors. Anyhow, thanks so much for watching, and if you did find this video useful, make sure to hit that like button down below, and also make sure to subscribe for the Foreigner 245, 245 Music, as well as Foreigner 945 long-term reviews that are coming up soon. And in the meantime, have fun with your fitness and we will see you in the next video.